Year three, how are you? Welcome to another week of brilliant learning. Um, and today is an exciting week because, wait for it. Today, we start the new topic of time. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, and it's, it's going to be, it's quite a tricky topic um, to learn about because you have AM and PM and you have a 12 hour clock and you have a 24 hour clock. That's quite hard um, to get your head around, but I'm really positive um, that, that you're gonna grasp this really well and you're gonna learn lots of great new things. But let's make a start. Um, so today's date is the 4th of May, 2020, it's a Monday, um, and our LI is to explore AM and PM. Um, and you will need a pencil, a piece of paper, and a ruler. So just make sure you've got that in front of you. Um, so as we go into the video, you can pause it. Um, when you need to, you can jot down your answers. Um, and of course, when you've got your answer down, you take a picture and email it to us at the email year three at grange.harrow.sch.uk um, and hopefully you would have seen some of your work in the shout out videos um, and also some of your work um, in the video head on Ms. Watson um, that summarised the online learning uh, for last week. Right, let's make a start. Just as a quick um, recap for from last week on perimeter, um, you have a square here and you have a square here. And my questions to you are, what is the perimeter of these squares? And once you've calculated the perimeter of these squares, write down a sentence to explain what you noticed, notice about their perimeters. Let's pause the video and do that now. Right, so you would have gathered that the perimeter of this square is four times four, so it has four equal sides. Um, which would give you a perimeter of 16 centimetres. And this um, square would be 20 times 4, which would be 80 centimetres. And what you would notice um, about the perimeter of these two squares that this, that is that, the, is that the perimeter of this square is five times greater than the perimeter of this square. And what's interesting is that this side, 4 centimetres, and this side is 20 centimetres. So this side is five times greater than this side. It's a, it's a relationship. Um, okay, you got that, well done. Let's move on. So as always, looking at our key vocabulary, and I can see that my face is covering some. There you go. So the key vocabulary for this week, for you to bear in mind, and in particular, um, you know, you need to think about using this vocabulary when I'm asking you to answer a reasoning question. But also, what you need to make sure is that by the end of this lesson, you understand what all of these six words mean because we'll be using them repeatedly um, in the week uh, when we're doing our, our different lessons. So the vocabulary is morning, afternoon, noon, midnight, p.m. and a.m. Right, so today you'll be learning about different times of the day and the vocabulary that we can use to describe or identify them. So just take some time to think about what facts do you already know about time? Just write some things down, whatever comes to your head, it could be anything. Um, just pause the video and take some time to um, write those facts down. Off you go. Okay, good. So here are some things that you may have written down on your piece of paper. There are 24 hours in one day. There are 60 seconds in one minute. There are 60 minutes in one hour. Um, there are 12 hours for a.m. and 12 hours for p.m. So essentially, the 24 hours you have in one day are split in two. The first part, the first 12 hours are referred to a.m and the second 12 hours are referred to as PM. Okay, right, so um, there are two types of clocks, um, and you have one here, this is one type of clock we, we're used to looking at, and this would probably appear in most of your classrooms. Um, I think we have one, I have one in the kitchen, um, but what you're probably more used to is 
this clock over here um, because this clock often appears on like I've got my watch here um, so I've got that type of clock there um, on your iPads, on phones, um, in cars um, this is the kind of type of clock that you are probably most used to so what I want you to do is is to think about what the name is of these clocks, what's similar, what's different about these two clocks. So pause the video um, and have a think about that. Okay, so this clock, which is the circle clock, um, with numbers going around it up to 12, is what we refer to as an analog clock. And this clock here, which I think most of us are used to because it's on our phones um, and it's um, on our watches is referred to as a digital clock. Now, um, write down some things that you notice that are different about them and things that you think are similar about them. Good. Right, so an analog clock is a 12 hour clock and a digital clock is a 24 hour clock. So, uh, as you can see on the analog clock, even though there are 24 hours in the day, the analog clock only shows numbers going up to 12. So what that means is that in any given day, the, the hands will go around this clock twice. So it'll go around once for AM and once for, for PM, and the whole day will be complete. A digital clock um, displays the time in a 24 hour clock. Now, if you're finding this quite overwhelming because there's a lot of information, don't worry because we'll be taking it step by step by step for the week. Um, and there'll be a lot of information today for you to digest. Um, but I don't want you to worry if you're finding it a bit too much, okay? It will become clearer as the week and the day goes on. Right, so this clock here um, shows uh, a 24 hour clock. Now, what do you notice about this clock? Pause it because this clock is different to, to this clock here. So what do you notice um, is different about these two clocks? Pause the video um, and write down your answer on your piece of paper. Okay, so what you would have noticed is, is that the clock inside, that's, there's two circles, an inside circle and an outside circle. Um, and what you'll notice is that here, it starts at 12, goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Those are the first 12 hours of the day. And then there's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and this will be 24 hours completed. Okay, so this clock shows... Um, the 12 hours that we have the day. The first 12 numbers are used for AM, and the, the second half of the 12 numbers are used for PM. Right, so here we go. Um, so a 12 hour clock, the hours go from 12 to 12 twice a day. You must use AM or PM when you are writing down um, the when you're writing on the 12 hour clock digitally, you must use AM or PM. So as you can see here, in this digital clock here, it says the time is 3.30 PM. So we know that that's in the afternoon, okay? AM is before noon, i.e. midday, and PM is afternoon. So noon is 12 o'clock midday, which is just before most of us have our lunchtime at school. 24 hour clock, the hours go from zero to 23, Time is always shown as four digits. You don't use AM or PM. And this 24 hour uh, clock is usually used in time timetables, mobiles um, and computers. So this is an example of the 12 hour clock. We have the time and PM to suggest it's the afternoon. This is the 24 hour clock where 3.30 is written as 15.30. And as you see, it's got four digits there. Right, so here we go. Here we have a clock, and it says 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. So this analog clock is showing 4 o'clock. Is it 4 a.m. or is it 4 p.m.? And how do you know? Pause the video and have a think about 
which one it is, 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. and how do you know? Okay, so because it's an analog clock um, and there's no suggestion of whether it's a.m. or p.m., we actually don't know whether it's a.m. or p.m. Um, I couldn't tell you by looking at this clock. There's nothing there to suggest whether this is a.m. or p.m. because we know that on an analog clock, um, it goes through 12 hours twice. And it could be either morning or in the afternoon, and we, have, we don't know. So an analog clock doesn't actually show you um, whether it's, it's the afternoon or the morning. So here we go. So here we have an analog clock that's showing you 8 o'clock. And you have a digital clock that's showing you 20, zero, zero. Now, I want you to pause the video um, and write down what's the same and what is different. Um, and what time of the day is it? And write an explanation on your piece of paper. Off you go. Right. So um, this clock is showing eight o'clock. Um, and it doesn't really indicate whether it's, as you said already, on a, on a 12 hour clock, or an analog clock, it's hard to know whether it's morning or afternoon. We're not really sure. Here, however, it says 20, zero, zero. Um, now this tells us that it's in the evening, um, because if it was in the morning, it would be zero, eight, zero, zero. Because a 24 hour clock, that means 12 hours have passed, okay? And another eight hours have been added on, so it's eight o'clock in the evening. Right. All right. So there are 24 hours in the day, as we discussed before. The hours are divided into two parts. Each part is 12 hours long. So the first part of 12, the first um, part of 12 hours is called AM, and the second part um, of 12 hours is called PM. Now, this diagram will explain, I think, more clearly um, how AM and PM work. So, here we have uh, midnight, okay, and that is when your 24 hours, the count of 24 hours begins. Starts at midnight, um, and the first, so bit from midnight all the way to 12 o'clock. Uh, midday at noon, the middle of the day, those are your first 12 hours. So the time between midnight and midday, that is referred, those times are referred to as a.m. Then the time from midday through to the afternoon, through the evening, um, is referred to as p.m. That is the time that is in the afternoon and evening. So the morning is a.m. and the afternoon and evening is referred to as p.m. Um, and just as a, a uh, think we think about which activities do you perform um, in the AM and which activities do you perform in the PM? Just jot some things down. So write an AM and some activities you might do in, in AM, i.e. in the morning, or um, activity you might do in PM, which is the afternoon and the evening. Off you go. Okay. And here we have the same information I've just shared with you, but we're representing it as a number line. If we start at zero, which is midnight, okay, um, from there all the way till midday, that is a.m. And from midday to midnight is p.m. Okay. So Danny Dog, our lovely friend, says that it has to be light outside to be a.m., and dark outside to be PM. Now, do you agree with Danny and give a reason for your answer? Now, I have seen some brilliant answers um, from Fiona um, and from uh, Sophie that use the full sentence, I agree with Danny dog because, or I disagree with Danny because. So explain whether Danny is right. Is it always light outside at AM? And is it always dark outside at PM? Write your answer down now. Now, um, even though we refer to AM as morning, we associate morning as being light, but the morning starts at midnight when it is not light. Um, and PM, we refer to as the afternoon and evening, but PM starts at 12 noon. Now, at 12 noon, the sun is at its highest point, 
Okay, so um, it is actually broad daylight. So Danny is actually wrong. Have you got that right? Well done. Now, here we have some activities, as you can see. This says gazing at stars, waking up, having a bath, eating lunch, eating breakfast, swimming, teaching in school, starting school, shopping, getting dressed and going to bed. And what I want you to do is, is pause the video and have a look at these activities and just list them in the correct one. Does the, does the activity take place at a.m. or does the activity take place during p.m.? Uh, off you go. Right, so let's start from here. So you obviously wake up in the morning, a.m. Now, um, having a bath, um, I usually do that in the evening, but some people might do that, in, do that in the morning, which is fine. Eating lunch is p.m. in the afternoon. Eating breakfast is a.m. Swimming, uh, if you obviously we're year three, is a.m. Teaching in school is both because it starts in the morning and it goes into the afternoon. So I'm going to put it on this line over here. Shopping, for me, p.m. Starting school, a.m. Getting dressed, a.m. Going to bed, p.m. And gazing at stars, p.m. How many did you get right? Now, this, these are the icons that I just showed you. Um, try, can you think of a way that you could represent the information more effectively? Now, one way of doing it would be to put it in chronological order, which we should know from our chronological reports means in time order. Okay, so kind of put them in times. What's the first thing you would do? You would wake up, um, and then you would uh, get dressed. There you go, um, and then you would have breakfast, then you would start school, um, then you'd have teaching in school, that goes on all day, then you may have swimming, then you would have eating lunch, then you would have having a bath. Oh, maybe shopping. Maybe shopping goes before having a bath. Shopping, having a bath, gazing at stars, and then eventually going to bed. So you, your order might be slightly different. Maybe you have breakfast before you get dressed, or maybe you get dressed and just school and have breakfast on the way. So your yours might your timeline might be a bit different to mine. But see what you come up with. So now the time has come for you to complete your tasks um, and they will be found on the Grange website. So once you um, stop watching this video, go on to the Grange website, click on to online learning, click the year three tab um, and there will be two tasks today, which I'll run through in a second. There'll be math task one dated 0405-2020 and then math task two and three dated 0405-2020. Um, once you've completed the tasks, um, please do remember to take a photograph of your work and email it to us at year three at grange.harrow.sch.uk. Um, I really do look forward to seeing you at your work. It makes my day. Um, I'm loving seeing all the fantastic learning I've taken place at home. I know it's not easy, uh, but you and your parent and carers are doing a great job by watching these videos and keeping up the fantastic work. OK, so now when you go into the online learning page and you click on to task one, you will get this. So as we know, we can have a look at these in science um, and in uh, maths. This is a Venn diagram. Um, so this is a.m. and p.m. and this in the middle where it overlaps suggests that um, it can take place in a.m. and p.m. At the bottom of the Venn diagram will be a, let's move my face out of the way, be a list of activities and it says complete the Venn diagram by writing the different activities of the day in the correct section. So something like walking to school, right, is, it was always in the morning and the morning as you have learned today is a.m. 
So you've got walking to school here. You wouldn't put walking to school in PM if you don't walk to school in the afternoon or the evening. And you wouldn't put it in in the more in this overlapping section, which means morning and evening, because you only really walk to school in the morning. Um, there are some activities here that you might do either in the morning um, or in the evening. So uh, I'm not going to give you a clue, there are some there. So try and think of which activities you could put in this overlapping section over here. Right, so once you have done task one, then go back onto the online learning page and click task two and three. So task two says, Caroline says, any time that it is dark, is PM and any time that is light is AM. And this is very similar to the dying dog question. Um, now, what I want you to write down is, do you agree and explain your thinking? So your sentence will start off with, I agree because, or I disagree because. I'm really looking for a nice detailed answer, really explaining and answering that question. Um, and finally, your final task, task three, is Little Red Riding Hood was traveling to visit her grandmother. She left her house at 7 AM. She had to take a three hour bus ride. The bus stopped near a movie theater. Little Red Riding Hood decided to see a movie. It lasted two hours. After the movie, she had lunch, which took one hour. Then she got back on the bus for one more hour. Finally, she arrived. Grandma met Red Riding Hood at the bus station and it took 15 minutes to walk to her house. So a lot of information there about times and how long things are taken. Your two questions are, did Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma finally arrive home in the AM or PM and give reason for your answer? Now here, I want you to really explain and think about adding all those times up and explain how you have come to the conclusion that it was PM or AM. And your second question is, what, active, what activity that Little Red Riding Hood did that began in the AM ended in the, in the PM? So, in this paragraph there, you can see that Little Red Riding Hood has done a lot of activities. She's been to the theatre, she's been on the bus, um, she has had lunch, and then she went on the bus for the hour. And what I'm asking you is, is which one of those activities that she did, did she start in the AM and but it ended in the PM? I mean, this is tricky and you really got to get your head around it, but I'd be really interested to see what answers you guys come up with. Um, so we go back to my normal page. Now you've done all of that and you're still really looking to do some more work on time. You want a little challenge. Um, here's one for you here. The challenge is true or false, zero, 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 which is a, which is a 24 hour clock, so four digits, is in the PM. Is that true or false? You need to explain your answer, please. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Keep the amazing work going. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow for more amazing work on time. Take care. Bye-bye.